those are uh, some really nice lungs you got there. They they must pump oxygen really well. Uh, right. You know, I really like your style. I think I might try it. <laughs> hey, this makes me feel pretty heady. This is 1981's Mystics in Bali. Out of the gate, we're rockin', and these characters clearly came to party. Smash cut to a casual stroll and an equally casual conversation. I'm surprised that a pretty girl like you would be interested in learning black magic. Well, I'm just curious. Mahindra shows off his Property of Notre Dame shirt and wins Kathy's affections, but an extreme close-up on a set of eyes acts as a cock block. The next morning, they head off to learn about a sect of black magic known as the Liak. I'm not sure sniffing skulls without permission is the best way to behave in a graveyard, but it's clearly fueled Kathy's passion for learning Liak magic. And that's why, Hendra, I'm so interested in this Liak magic. There's a sudden rainstorm and the sound of jovial laughter, which may or may not be the Joker. <laughs> She finally runs out of laughter, and they discuss Kathy learning Liak techniques, ending with an unexpected handy. The next night, Kathy and Mohindra are greeted with laughter, but for some reason, Mohindra is confused. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> they do an Uber Eats delivery of blood and get a five-star rating. Mm, good, delicious. This is good blood. Which translates to a tentacle struggling to reach out and draw on your leg. Kathy and the Liak Queen come dressed alike to the first class, which starts with a you had to be there moment. <laughs> and then things seemingly go off the rails. I don't remember turning into a pig on my first day of school, but it was equally as embarrassing. The next day, Mohindra visits its uncle to figure out how to undo what he started, and apparently... Actually, it is quite easy. You know, you can trust the word of a guy with wicked sideburns and an awesome hat. Kathy must have had a banger first class, cuz... My stomach's aching, and my heart feels like it's going to burst. She returns to the Layak Queen for healing, and... <laughs> I guess that could be considered healing. The repayment for services rendered seems a tad high. I will have to borrow your head for a short time. Despite that, props to Kathy, who keeps a pretty good looking set of internal organs. I mean, she headbutts a midwife with her general spleen area and knocks her through a wall. What happens next is one of the weirdest sequences in cinema history. <laughs> Kathy risks serious damage to her intestinal tract by not clearing that window. But the Layak Queen doesn't even ask her about it. Her only goal is to brag. I've succeeded finally in moving your head. And utilizing it. Now, you might be wondering how you won up that intense of a night. Well, the answer involves party favor tongues and giant lips. If you guessed this leads to a snake transformation, I'd say you're either a really good guesser, or you've been through the LIAC program. The next night, Kathy shows us what happens when you don't follow TOS, and I'm completely amazed at how unfazed this passerby is as Kathy steps out for a night of debauchery. Makizi and his buddies discuss the LIAC threat and come to a very specific conclusion. The goal of this meeting today is to work out a way to put an end to all of this. The Liat Queen surprises Kathy and kinda oversteps the bounds of a student-teacher relationship. I just need to borrow your head for a moment. You can't. I used your head twice before and you always obeyed me. With that, she loses her head. I'm starting to think she needs to duct tape that thing in place. She seems to get lost on her way to suck out more pregnant women. Things go from bad to worse as she flees a bunch of torch and pitchfork carrying folks who want to turn her into a piñata. Elsewhere, Makizi sets a trap on Kathy's headless, magically upright body, which apparently confuses her. Ultimately, her lack of hands is a downfall, and she abandons her body. Makizi and Mahindra set a guard on Kathy's remains, noting, We gotta prevent her head from joining her body. Otherwise, she'll become invincible. Then there'll be nothing we can do about it. Kathy shows up, but tries to be inconspicuous. 
or at least as inconspicuous as a mannequin attached to a fake digestive tract can be. Makizi pulls out his party piece, and the Liat Queen steals his thunder by doing whatever this is. They battle back and forth until he partially loses his head. Luckily, he pulls a Lord of the Rings move and comes back in his white form. Mahindra tries to help, but ultimately he brought a dagger to a Liak fight. Weirdly, it's his son that does both the Liak Queen and Kathy in. Things just kinda end and we're left to ponder these mysteries and oh so much more. Mystics in Bali, originally released as Liak, is a 1981 Indonesian supernatural horror film directed by H. Tejet Jelil, who went on to direct mockbuster Lady Terminator. It borrows heavily from Southeast Asian legends and folklore, mainly the Liak and the Penny and Galen, which involves spirits in the form of a flying head with organs still attached. It's considered one of the first Indonesian films created for a Western audience and has earned cult classic status, being called the holy grail of Asian cult cinema. In the 70s and 80s, the Indonesian government saw film production as a good chance for revenue, so they started creating low-budget exploitation films for an international market. Mystics in Bali was one of these. The film's lead was a German tourist visiting Bali and was chosen by the wife of one of the film producers. Filming took place on the island of Java instead of Bali, as some of the locals were too superstitious to allow the rituals shown on the film to be performed there. Generally, it's easy to dismiss Mystics in Bali as a goofy, shocking piece of schlock, but its merits go quite a bit deeper if you choose to look. For every flat performance given, there are expressive and memorable moments that jump off the screen especially with Sophie W.D., who played the older Liak Queen. The movie leans heavily into Balinese and other South Asian mythologies, but lets it stand on its own without over-embellishing it. Of course, when you're dealing with the myth of a floating head with dangling organs and entrails that eats newborns, you got a pretty solid base. The effects are frankly hilarious, but the ambition of what they were trying to accomplish can't be understated. Their shock value adds to the experience, and I'm not sure this would be as memorable without them. The practical effects used in the animal transformations were visceral and detailed. Another part of this movie that you probably won't forget. Mystics in Bali is the definition of a roller coaster ride. There's long stretches of conversation and incredibly weird laughter that can sometimes be difficult to get through. But then all of a sudden, there's a mannequin head with a bunch of organs attached to it that does a flyby, and you will absolutely lose your shit. I was not prepared for what this movie really is. It's a gem of low budget indie horror that shouldn't be missed. It's readily accessible, so if any part of this review has piqued your interest, do not overlook Mystics in Bali. So what do you think? Suggestions for movies? Trivial questions. Oh, <laughs> excuse me for a second. My baby back ribs are done. Ah, just the way I like them. Comments, ratings, and some duct tape to keep my head attached would be appreciated. Thank you so very much for watching.